Register to vote. That's been the catchphrase for several months now, in the streets, in our homes, and on various social networking sites. Mayor Marty Walsh and Boston's Elections Commissioner, Dion Irish, have been saying it too. They have implemented a plan that encourages your participation in various ways to guarantee a secure election process. For the first time, the city of Boston has launched an early voters website and the opportunity for you to vote outside of your district. So you're registered to vote. What's next? Commissioner Iris is here with us today. He will answer that question in a moment. He'll also tell us about what the department is doing to help us throughout this year's election process. Commissioner Irish oversees the election department, which conducts all municipal, state, and federal elections within the city of Boston. Commissioner Irish has served as executive director of the city's Office of Fair Housing and Equity. Irish was responsible for the leadership and supervision of Boston's Anti-Discrimination Enforcement Agency, which includes the Fair Housing and Human Rights Commissions. Commissioner Irish, thank you so much for thank joining you for us. Me. You Great are such a here. busy guy. Yes, uh, but I wouldn't have it any this, other way. Yes, this is very important. The elections are very uh -huh. important, so it's exciting for us to be preparing for mm -hmm. the launch of early voting and for the, exactly. the presidential election. This year um, has a couple of firsts. We'll get into that in a little bit. But mm -hmm. what is your background? What do you what What does uh, elections commissioner do? What's your responsibility? So my responsibility is to uh, ensure that we have smooth and clean elections. We have over 400,000 registered voters and 255 voting precincts. Mm -hmm. So my job is to ensure that we're fully staffed, we're ready to, to allow our voters to exercise their rights to vote on election day. We maintain the, the voter database, make sure it's up to date and accurate. Mm -hmm. And we also conduct a census each year of this, all the city residents who are age 17 years and older. Mm -hmm. What does that census consist of? Like, what what does that entail? It, it's that, um, that it's done in, in, in like three phases. Our first phase is we we send out a mailing to each and every household and ask all residents to um, respond to the census that way. Mm -hmm. Then we also uh, promote online responses, and our last phase is we actually go door to door from May to August for folks who didn't respond to the census, so we could go out there and physically count them. And, and have as accurate of a count as possible. And it's really helpful for the city to know what our current population size is and uh, in order for us to effectively deliver services. And we also provide a list each year to the state jury commissioner. So what it does is ensures all of our residents a right to a fair jury that um, a representative of them should they uh, need to go to a trial. What has the city done um, th for this year's election process um, that's different? Yeah, for, for the upcoming election, what's different is we know presidential elections, we generally see a larger turnout, so we're planning for a higher volume of voters, mm -hmm. but the major difference is that we're going to implement early voting for the first time in the city of Boston, so that's, that's huge and uh, we're very excited about that. We're not the first to do this, obviously. More than half of the states in the United States are already implementing early voting, so we're joining you know, those waters. But what it does is it recognizes that restricting voting to one day may not serve all of our voters you know, equally. Um, some folks are working two or three jobs, or they work in jobs that may not allow them to vote on election day. They may not qualify to vote through the absentee process. You have persons with disabilities who uh, on a particular day, could, their disability could flare up and cause them to be unable to get to the polls. So That's true. just having more days in order for you to cast your vote, which still gets counted on election day itself, but just having a wider window provides more access to voters and I think makes democracy stronger. Mm -hmm. The other first is is that we're able to vote outside of our district. Talk about that. Yes, that's that's very interesting as well because you know we're, we're accustomed to going to an assigned precinct based on your address mm -hmm. where only your ballot is there based on your address and that's where you vote. Well, for early voting, we're changing all of that. Any voter can vote at any one of our early voting sites. You're not restricted to one in your neighborhood or you're in your city council district. If you live in Roxbury and you're in East Boston on a day that we have a site in East Boston, a ballot will be there for you and you'll be able to vote. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. And what are the different ways that we're able to vote? 
So you could vote through, in Boston, you can vote through the early um, voting process, mm -hmm. and that's, we'd have a, a schedule of lots of locations which we'll talk about, but you can also vote early by mail. And you can, uh, the, another way to vote is through the absentee process for folks who are not gonna be in the city on election day, uh, qualify based on a religious or medical reason, uh, they can vote through the absentee process. And the ultimate and final way to vote is to vote on election day, which this year is November 8th. Uh, polls, where are, the, where are the polls? Is it different for the early voting process? Where are those polls? It's, um, it's different. So on, on election day, we'll have 255 precincts um, in about 170 different buildings. We do have multiple precincts in some buildings. And every, every voter is notified and sent a, a letter to inform them of where their particular um, assigned precinct is for election day. Mm -hmm. For early voting, we have established City Hall as being the main site. Um, early voting begins October 24th and ends November 4th. And so City Hall will be open on a daily basis during that period of time, Monday through Friday. And City Hall will also be open on five evenings during the early voting period. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the first week, and Monday, Wednesday in the second week. Aside from City Hall, we'll have 27 additional in-person voting opportunities throughout the city. Uh, this is a product of community engagement where we, we wanted to know what, would, what folks think early voting should look like. And what came back to us was that there should be a focus on evening hours, focus on the Saturday, and they'd like the opportunity to have early voting sites that are either in or near every neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So we've developed a plan to, that accommodates that. And now our focus is on spreading the word. So thank you for having me here on the show of today course. because we want to make sure that we are doing the best we can to educate the public mm -hmm. of where the sites are, what hours they're open, and how they can participate through the early voting process. Um, there are a couple of ways to find out the full schedule. The easiest way is to, you could call 311, mm -hmm. uh, our city's information online, and they can provide you with all the information on the sites and the hours. Uh, they can also visit our website, which is boston.gov slash early dash voting. I'll say it one more time, boston.gov slash early dash voting to find out the specific locations and times. But I will say the sites that are in the neighborhood, the 27 sites I mentioned, they'll all be open from 2 p.m. until 8 p.m. on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And on Saturday, we'll have nine sites going at once. So it's like a super Saturday. And there'll be one site in each city council district on Saturday, October 29th. And they'll all be open from 12 p.m. until 6 p.m. on Saturday. If people are going through the early voting process, how do we know that that system is secure? Like, how do we know that they won't be counted multiple times? That's a great question, and, and we've been asked that many times. So on, on a regular election day, there is a, a paper, uh, there's a book printed out with all of the eligible voters for a particular precinct. For early voting, because anyone can vote anywhere, we're going to have um, tablets, electronic poll books, we call them. And I just want to, you know, give credit to Mayor Martin J. Walsh for the budget that he gave us that allowed us to get the poll books and to be able to do the marketing that we're going to be doing. But it's, to get back to your question, mm -hmm. is you'll be checked in using an electronic poll book that has all of our eligible voters in, in, in it, and, and then you'll be allowed to vote. And each night we'll, we'll be um, basically um, updating our, red, uh, our list so we have an accurate um, count of who voted and when so that on election day, those ballots, they all go out to the um, respective precincts for counting, and the list will be marked to reflect all the voters who were voted early by early voting or by the absentee process. So you, no one gets to vote twice, but you get to vote more conveniently. We have more places mm -hmm. and, um, and, and more times for you to cast your vote. Why so much emphasis on getting people to vote? Um, there's been a lot of, like I mentioned, six hundred and seventy thousand um, dollars was a budget that was distributed. Actually, what was allocated to that? Let's start there first. Um, how has that money been distributed? So the the um, the six hundred and seventy thousand dollars that Mayor Walsh was funded us for early voting allowed us to hire the right people, mm -hmm. train them to secure the sites that we have, to purchase electronic poll books to have at all of our sites and also to, to have a robust marketing campaign that's um, multilingual, 
that's able to um, to reach our, re our residents in multiple ways. So we're doing social media outreach. We're doing advertising in newspapers. We just did a mailing um, in four languages to every single household. So it's about 300,000 households that we just did a mailing to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're doing billboards, bus shelter signs. We're, you know, <laughs> we're really, you know, making a big effort out of this because um, if people don't know about it, they, you know, it's, it might as well not, it's not, it's just like it doesn't exist if mm -hmm. they're not aware of it. And it's mm -hmm. such a, uh, a new thing and a different uh, experience for Boston voters that we felt like it, it warranted a really strong campaign. Mm -hmm. And how has it been going as far as, what, what's the word on the street? What are people talking people about? People are excited. Um, mm -hmm. We have, a, we've been um, contacted by a lot of organizations who mm -hmm. are really excited about this. They're planning events and doing outreach around specific sites that are in their target area, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, so we're excited about that. I know uh, one of our city agencies, um, the Spark Boston Initiative to Engage Millennials, mm -hmm. they're, they're doing some cool things on the Saturday of um, early voting. They're gonna have nine events in each near each um, early voting site, mm -hmm. and they're doing things like having a, a run that ends at an early voting site uh, or a musical performance at another site. So. There are a lot of exciting ways that people are looking to help promote early voting. And yeah, we, I think this is really great and a really good thing for democracy. But you have to have help. Who else do you partner with? Well, Besides for, Spark Boston, because I yeah. know you mentioned them. First of all, I, wanna, you know, I have a great staff. I want to mention them, and I also want to mention the poll workers. I, I think sometimes they don't get enough credit. The poll workers are, are folks who are volunteering with us to work for one day and they're um, so critical to en enabling folks to cast their vote that we really appreciate them. They um, commit to this every year, mm -hmm. get trained, and then they uh, administer our sites on election day. But in terms of our um, other partners, um, we have numerous partners um, within the city and outside. Within the city, I'll name a few. Uh, we have our Office of Immigrant Advancement. They've been very helpful. Uh, our entire civic engagement cabinet, which includes our 311 center, uh, Office of Neighborhood Services, Spark Boston, they've been tremendously helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, in our Health and Human Services Cabinet, we have uh, the Boston Center for Youth and Families, which they have 36 sites throughout the city and they, they touch a lot of folks. They are, are being very helpful with this um, to get the word out and to engage particularly young folks and families. The NAACP, okay. um, the, all the, the health centers in the city of Boston, mm -hmm. they've reached out to us and there's 22 health centers that touch about 400,000 people, and they wow. have a strong outreach effort that's, um, that's also being launched at the moment. Mayor Walsh had this to say about you. Dion's background in anti-discrimination enforcement brings a unique perspective to the elections department. How does your background contribute to um, how you demonstrate inclusive inclusivity um, for voters? Um, well, I think my background helps me to have a equity lens. Um, and I, I guess a good example of that would be early voting. Um, mm -hmm. The law actually only requires us to have early voting in person at City Hall. That's the minimum. To go beyond that, it was totally at our discretion. Um, I felt it was important, oh. and Mayor Walsh also felt it was important that we not just have voting at City Hall, that we at least provide opportunities throughout the city uh, equally distributed you know, for all neighborhoods, um, and that's the plan that we came up with. So uh, you know, I, I would say that that's where that lens comes into play. That is excellent. You and Mayor Marty Walsh are doing such an excellent job in um, you know, getting the word out there and, and encouraging people to vote. What would you say to uh, some of the people that are saying, oh, I'm not going out to vote, my vote doesn't count, I don't like either party? As every vote counts, and you know, I, I, sh I think that we should not limit our votes to a particular candidate or a particular party. Let's think about uh, what it means to have a government for the people, by the people. It, you know, it means that you know everyone should vote in order for us to have a functioning democracy. The more people that are voting, the stronger our democracy is. Um, so I would say, if, if you don't like a candidate, you can write mm -hmm. yourself in, but mm -hmm. vote. And you also, if you don't vote, then, you know, you can't, don't complain in the end if you don't like something. Yeah, you know, definitely you should not complain if you didn't vote. 
And, you know, if you don't like candidates, there are questions that you can vote on. So, right. And there are a lot exactly. of decisions to be made that affect exactly. our community. Commissioner Irish, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Such a pleasure. I've learned a lot, tremendous a lot about you and uh, just the whole elections process. Well, I definitely appreciate being here, and uh, hopefully you'll vote early as well. No, I definitely you am. will? Yes, right. yes. Maybe on October 24th, maybe that <laughs> particular day. If you would like more information about the City of Boston's Boston Elections Department, registration and polling deadlines, please visit boston.gov forward slash elections or send an email to election at boston.gov or call 617-635-8683. As always, thanks for joining me on this edition of Commissioner's Corner. I'm Najah Mawasi.